All right, this just might be a coincidence this time, but I feel like I've been beating a dead horse about how whenever there's a Bigfoot report in an area, you get a controlled burn. Hello, Squatch Americans. Scott here from Squatch America. And we are in the Sam Houston National Forest, um, also known as the Big Thicket. And uh, we're out here following up on some Bigfoot reports and it's the beginning of February of 2021. And it's beautiful out here. Uh, love being in the South in the winter time. Sure beats uh, South Dakota right now. <laughs> But uh, it's kind of interesting. We came out here today to, to check out the area and follow up on some reports. And uh, we thought it would be a good time to go because a couple days ago, a really, uh, really good downpour came through. A uh, thunderstorm had thunder and lightning and the whole thing. Thought that it would leave some uh, good tracks in muddy areas if possible. Um, so far we haven't run across any, uh, we haven't run across any muddy areas actually it dried out in one day. So that's probably out for us. Uh, we did see some interesting tree stuff, but nothing conclusive. Uh, we found some interesting piece of scat though. Uh, one I'm not familiar with. Uh, I am familiar with this type of forest. I spent a lot of time in Georgia and this is very similar to the forest in Georgia. You got some lovely uh, deserty type plants mixed with some uh, fir trees and pine trees and uh, whatever these are trees, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but we are uh, going to spend the day out here looking around and seeing what we can find. Some really interesting sightings here, and uh, here's one of them now. My family and I had moved to Montgomery County in October of 2001. In December, I'd noticed an old logging road leading into the Sam Houston National Forest from the subdivision, which was still under development at that time. I haven't hiked since I was a teenager, so I decided to see where this road went when the weather permitted. In April 2002, I'd taken some vacation time from work, and one afternoon after mowing, I thought I would go for a walk, a routine I continued for several days, going further down the road and deeper into the woods with each trek. I had seen evidence of deer, hog, squirrel, and even bear in that area. On the sixth day, I walked by an area that had springs on both sides of the trail, which alternated sides every so often. I noticed on this trip there was no animal sound or activity, and I felt watched. So I stopped and surveyed my surroundings. To the east of me, about 25 yards away in the thick underbrush, something quite robust in size and dark in color seemed to be crouched between a couple of trees looking in my direction. I thought it was a large hog or maybe a bear. So I turned south and headed toward home. But this creature moved along with me, keeping a distance of approximately 15 to 30 yards between us at all times. We continued this kind of cat and mouse routine for about 20, maybe 25 minutes. I stopped to relieve myself. Then suddenly, I don't know what possessed me to turn into the woods toward this creature, but I did. It stopped and crouched very low to the ground and remained perfectly still. I'd gotten about 10 yards from it, 
then I got wind of a strange odor I can't describe. I heard a low guttural growl coming from the creature's area. I could see it was very dark in color and almost lying in a prone position, much like a, sl a sniper lining up a shot. It had human-like legs, only very hairy, and I could make out thick arms and so shoulders, also covered with thick hair, probably no more than one to two inches in length. It was down, almost as if it was trying to hide its face. I would estimate it to be no more than six feet tall, but the hair on my neck stood up when I heard movement of something large moving in the woods from the trail behind me. I moved quickly back onto the trail, and it seemed I was no longer being followed, so I slowed my pace. By this time, I was about 100 to 125 yards from the point I had urinated. I turned and I saw this dark figure walk upright out of the east woods and stop at my pedal area. It squatted for a few seconds and stood up and looked directly at me for a few more. Then it turned abruptly toward the west woods and a much larger dark being came, came slightly into view. They both watched me as I backpedaled watching them for another dozen or so yards when I decided that home was the best place to be and ran off. So there were about three years of follow-up to this story. And over the next three years, he, uh, living in that area, he would often feel being watched when he was outdoors. He would hear loud crashing sounds from the woods. Um, during times of no animal activity in the area, all of his dogs would growl and look fearfully into the woods. He would hear occasional chattering and screams, smell foul odors, um, different sticks and debris would be thrown from the woods, and he even saw eye shine one evening about eight feet from the ground. And his neighbor even said at that time that she heard grunts and groans some nights and her dog would shake. All right, this just might be a coincidence this time, but I feel like I've been beating a dead horse about how whenever there's a Bigfoot report in an area, you get a controlled burn. And we're here um, doing our search, and lo and behold, the area that we're going to, whether it's just my bad luck or not, uh, ended up being in a controlled burn and very recently it's still smoking here behind me so is that a government covered up i don't know but i, I kind of doubt it this time because we haven't had a lot of recent reports in this area and it just might be a coincidence but it's an interesting coincidence so uh thanks for watching and thanks for uh spending your time here with us in the national forest of central texas the big thicket they call it and as always like subscribe click the bell notification so you know when we do a new video and go out and find bigfoot <laughs>